Hey there, it's Crafty Jennabug. What's this? Paper bag on my desk. This doesn't seem right. What? What's going on here? <laughs> if you've been here for this 2023 junk journal series that I've been working on, you know what this means. I am embarking on a new journal. This one for the month of July. This journal will be ocean themed. I'm pretty excited. Um, but I'm not ready for this yet. Not at all. I gotta, I have an idea. Something I haven't really done yet when it comes to making the cover of a journal. So, let's see. It's ocean themed, right? I got some fabrics. Oh, that one I don't need yet. Got a few fabrics. Just a few. I've been gathering for this mission. And I got that little guy. That's what I got. And with these, I kind of want to try a little something new. I do not have experience with quilting, but I want to attempt to make a quilt-like cover for this journal. What am I getting myself into? <laughs> Firstly, I've got a lot of blues. I have some sharks. Oh, you're not supposed to be in there. That's stuck in. I have some really cute, um, like coral. I have this really pretty sea themed turtles and seahorses and coral. Coral. Sharks various blues. Actually, I think this blue might go on the inside, but these other ones, maybe a little outside. I'm really excited. So the first thing I'm going to do, this one's just plain blue, in case you couldn't tell. First thing I will do is cut this down to size. This is a piece of paper that will be representative of the max paper size in my journal. I'm just going to, so I can cut it here. And I'm using this as a template to figure out how tall I want this to about there. And this is just so I know what size cover I need to make. So, my journal cover needs to be roughly 14 inches by nine and a half. Um, you know what, I'm gonna say 10 inches, 10 inches tall by, by 15 wide. That way it gives me a little bit of overlap so I can wrap it and frame the inside fabric. Okay, so set that to the side because I am not ready for it yet. And then I need to figure out, now I have never quilted. I have a friend who quilts. I don't like it because there's too much ironing involved. So, I'm just going to cut some pieces. Now, when I say quilting, I mean I'm just going to like patch these together. It's not going to be anything like quilting. They're just going to be patchwork. Because it's a junk journal. And I'm not that dedicated to the cause.
I could do this a couple of different ways. I could cut all the pieces out, sew them together. I could glue them down and then sew them like a quilt. I think I'm going to glue them down and then sew like a quilt. Okay, so I'm just gonna be intuitive with this. I'm gonna spread some yes paste all over it and then start cutting pieces and placing them down. All right, this is covered in yes paste and I think I'm ready. This will end up being the back cover. This will be the front cover. You know, like the front and the back. So. Unfortunately, my battery died and I didn't realize until too late. So this is what we've got. I cut this strip here so that it would be the spine. And then this I replaced or covered up. I covered up with a bigger piece because there was a gap here. And I stuck a small shark piece there. Now I want to add some little details. I have some blue satin ribbon. Yeah, I think I'm going to glue some satin ribbon to kind of make this look a little bit less crazy. That works a bit better for me. You don't see my, all of my poorly cut lines. <laughs> and what I think I'll do is once it's dry, I'll trim against I'll trim it flush with the um, paper bag, and then I will probably take a different, then I think what I'll do is do the inside, and then take a ribbon, a thicker ribbon, and sew along the edges, so. Gotta let this dry. All right, this has dried. And what I'm gonna do now is turn it over and trim all around the edges, not completely to the edge because I do wanna have a little bit left over. Or I do wanna have a little overlap, but it's not going to be folded over like I had initially said it would. Here we have the cover. I sewed, I don't know if you can actually see. I sewed along the ribbon, very messily. I have no business um, quilting, I have learned. So, this is the other side. I am going to spread the yes paste around and I went ahead and cut the fabric that will be the inside. So I'm just gonna glue it down off camera. The glue on the inside cover has dried, so I trimmed it to meet up mostly with the, uh, the front. And then I sewed around the edges. Something happened. And a lot of my stitches came out weird. I don't know why my sewing machine is throwing a hissy fit but it is very strange. This is where I started and it went well until about here. And then things got a little weird. I might have to adjust the tension or something. I'm not sure. I'm leaving it though. <laughs> I kind of like the wonkiness. I'm tempted to sew over it a second time just to make it look a bit more weird. And I'm going to fray the edges a bit. On the inside, you can see where I started. It looks all nice and neat. And it's okay. And then chaos. Just sheer chaos. And I'm, like I said, I'm gonna leave it. 
I'm going to leave it. I've got all these weird, I mean, it's a junk journal, right? Got all these weird things going on. So, my cover is complete. Awesome. Now let's work on some pages. All right, I am gonna play with the jelly plate to decorate some pages. I have a fair stack over here of various different things. I have a variety of different blues and greens to work with. And yeah, let's do it. How about we start with this cool blue. And why not some aqua sky? This is Island Green. Okay, we got that. And that. I like that. I'm not sure how long I want this piece to be, so I might just cut that off. Okay. I have a piece of a calendar page that I want to pull this up on. <laughs> I ended up with some pull. Okay, so that's not perfect, but I like it. How about we play with some stamps I made? I've got this. Let's do some fun colors. Got this yellow ochre. All right, we're gonna let that dry, and then I'll do a layer of blue. That has dried fairly quickly. I'm going to take some of this cool blue. Alright, I don't hate it. I wish that had gone a little better. Okay, let's Leave this cool stuff going on here. Give it a minute to dry and then I will add more colors. So I made a bunch of plant stamps and I am going to use two different greens to stamp. Gotta let those dry. Okay, that's awesome. I like that a lot. Wonderful. Interesting. Didn't come up all the way, but I kind of dig it. Okay.
Okay. I got two more little sheets. Let this dry and then do something over it. Alright, I've got a Neptune blue and an ice blue, which is kind of a light, light, light green blue. And I'm just going to add them. Cool. Very cool. All right. Neat. I think that is going to be where I stop with the jelly plate. Next, I'm going to use the packaging from the gel plate. And I want to use some Distress Oxide inks, of which I have a few different colors in mind. Yeah, you can see all those. And I've got some Distress Oxide and spray stains. And we're just going to dye some paper. I think I will start with a little peacock feathers. And salty ocean because well, it's an ocean themed journal right you gotta have some salty ocean in there let's get missing this is a piece of paper i dyed with tea i believe oh i like that actually a lot i wanted the texture of the paper to stay. Cool. I like that. That one I'm gonna let dry. Alright, I've got this guy from the gel printing and I'm just gonna see what I can pick up with it. Instead of cleaning off. All right, let's clean this off. And we'll do that again. This time, do a little chipped sapphire. Make sure this is dry so I'm not contaminating my things. Chipped sapphire. Just a little bit. A little tumbled glass. It's just a plain piece of copy paper. Oh my goodness, I love that. That looks amazing. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. This was a paper that I dyed previously and I'm just spritzing. I'm just spraying a little bit more on it. I've got this little little guy. And I just want to spray. Sprays on. That was mowed lawn. And then I have a elderberry dyed piece of book page. Let's do more peacock feathers and stormy sky. and tumbled glass. I've got one more page that I want to dye using the Distress Oxide inks. 
I found this guy, this little lobster, and I think I'm going to make him a page like this. I think it's really cool. But this page is a little too plain. So what I'm going to do is take some frayed burlap. I did not add any ink to this page. I'm just going to do this again with what's already on there. a little bit more. All right, that is dry. Going to do some more frayed burlap. I'm going to do a tiny bit of vintage photo. We're starting to mess up the printing. Ooh. I like that a lot. So that's going to get dried. So that is dry now. That's the other side. I think I'm going to take this side with the little bit that's left on here just to add a little bit of variation. Yep. I'm not getting any where the lobster is. There we go. Now I'm gonna dry that. So here are the pages that I plan to use in this journal. Here I've got an envelope that I um, use distress oxide sprays and coffee to dye. That's why it's shiny because there was coffee sprink instant coffee sprinkles um, in water and they were really concentrated so they became shiny. But I really like it. This is the other side. I went ahead and fol folded this flap inside and glued it down so that you have something to see when you um, put things in the pockets. You won't see just the blue liner on the inside. So that will be in one of the signatures. I have two pieces of um, scrap packing paper. This one I used my, to clean my brayer off on when I was making the jelly plates. This I used to protect my surface when I was using distress sprays. And I thought they looked pretty cool. This one wanted to be folded weird, so I folded it weird. One of those can go in each signature. Here we have a variety of papers that are not full size. This one just seemed fun to fold weird. A little old dictionary page that I did watercolor on. This is one of the jelly printed pages on the back of this. Um, I was playing with Distress Oxide inks in the June journal. I thought it would look good folded like that. This was scrap paper, or no, this was a jelly print that I did and I decided to do a little bit on the back. book page, very crinkly. I used a bunch of Distress Oxide and spray stains. Blue bubble paper with uh, jelly plate on, with jelly print on the other side. Piece of scrapbook paper that was cut down with jelly print on the other side. And this was part of a jelly print Actually, I think it was part of this one. I think it's the margins for this one, either that way or that way. I think it's that way. Either way, um, when I was ripping this out, that just looked so cool I had to use it. And so it's getting used. It's white on the other side, but I can change that. And then the full or almost full size pages. Here's one of the jelly prints on some scrapbook paper with blue swirls all over it. This I printed out. I found it online. I can link down below. It was a bunch of vintage nautical themed images. I thought it would be gorgeous as the middle of a signature. 
So that's one signature middle, white on the back. This was the um, calendar page. I just thought it was too pretty. This is going to be the other signature middle. And on the back, we've just got a bunch of blue um, jelly print. So those I will keep handy because I know I want those to go in the middles. This was one of the jelly prints I did earlier in this video. The plants didn't come out so well, but I can always restamp them. And it was on the back of this page, which was also a jelly print from when I was making the April journal. Scrapbook paper with a jelly print on the other side. I really like this one. It didn't print perfectly, but I think it's really cool. And then we've got this one. I also really like, even though we've got this yellow smear going on, it was on the back of this paper that was dyed with Distress Oxide inks and water. Here is a piece of bubble paper, so lots of blue, a little bit of purple, and a tiny splash of red up here, but there are very um, visible bubbles on both sides. And then the lobster. I like it. I wanted to add a few more browns in there, so I managed to. So, here we have the two center pieces. Let's assemble these pages, or these signatures, shall we? Got one, two, three, four, five, six full size or somewhat full size pages. I think I've only got two full size pages three full size pages. The rest have been torn a little at the edges. So I'm just going to start playing around and assemble these. So these are together. This is my first signature. This is my second signature. Before I go any further, I want to use a technique I saw Louisa Heinzel do where she grunged up the edges of her signatures using Distress Oxide sprays and water. So that's what I'm going to do next. What colors do I want to use? Let's do some Stormy Sky. did that. Next, I will take a little, those are still wet. I'm going to take a little walnut stain, the stress oxide spray, and I'm just going to spritz a little bit. I'm going to let these dry completely. I dried them a little, but they are not anywhere near completely dry. So my cover is ready. My signatures are dry. And I took the time to make sure that the creases were all butted up against each other and paper clipped them together so that they don't shift while I'm poking holes. I'm going to use the template I used in the last two journals. I'm going to do the five hole pamphlet stitch once again. It fits since the, um, the tallest page is the size of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. This will still work. If it were a smaller one, I would obviously make a smaller template. So we've got the center here. Now we get a little stabby and I'm going to poke a hole at the intersection of each of these lines. So 10 holes total in the spine. Got my holes in the spine. I'm going to poke holes in the signatures and for this 
I'm just going to line this up. The signature is a little bit shorter. I am lining up this one row of holes with the crease of the signature. And that's where I'm going to put my holes. So that one is done. Next, this one. Same thing. I'm going to just line this up. Now we're going to sew in the signatures. All right, to sew in the signature, I'm using six strands of embroidery floss in a dark blue. And I made sure it was at least three times the height of the journal. And then yeah, the tail. So that's my first signature. This is going to be my second signature. So I'm going to sew it in first, just a personal preference, um, because I find it easier to lay them on top of each other. I don't know. Like I said, personal preference. I'm doing a five hole pamphlet stitch. I'm going to start in the bottom and line it up like so. I'm going to leave a tail so that I can tie it when it's over. And I'm just going to use a piece of masking tape. Just a little piece to keep this in place. I'm going to actually put it under there because I don't want to end up messing up this image just in case. So then I'm going to go up through the next hole in the spine and in can't see <laughs> in the spine and in the signature if I can find it I did not punch a very good hole there we go Pull it a little bit tight, not too tight. And then I'm just going to go in the, through the center hole. I like to poke through the signature and then through the hole. And then in through the next hole. Through the hole in the signature. And then through the top hole. Now comes the tricky part. Going back down, but not poking through the string as I come back through. I don't want to I don't want to pierce this one of the strands of the string. This one's being a pain. Okay. 
think we're good. Back into this one. That one is not good. I did pierce into the string, so then I just have to go back, unpierce it, pull it tight. So here I've come back down to the bottom. I'm just going to pull and make sure these are all as tight as they can be because I don't want it slipping. All right, so that's good. I'm going to, I guess, three times the length isn't as necessary for this. I'll remove that, pull everything tight. And then I'll tie it here at the bottom with a square knot. And then I'll do it one more time. And I will trim these. All right, so that is sewn in. I can add a drop of glue here if I feel so inclined. So I'm going to sew in the second, the, I guess, I'm going to sew in the other signature off camera and I'll be back. Here it is, all sewn in. Let's have a quick little flip through. Oh no, that ended up upside down. I am not taking this out to fix it. That explains how this one was upside down. I turned this one, oh man. Some of these stuck together a bit. That's depressing. Man, so this one ended up, it's all upside down. I'm not fixing it. Not doing it. Yep, not fixing it. It's just going to be upside down. Man, that's disappointing though. I guess I should have paid more attention to what I was doing. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not going back and re-sewing it. I had such a hard time sewing this one in. Oh, well. We're just going to roll with it. That's the beauty of junk journaling, right? We're just going to roll with it. So I have a regret. I just thought of this. And now I think I have to... All sign... <laughs> I just thought of this and all signs are pointing to remove the signatures and sew them back in again, even though I struggled on that first one. So I have this black mesh and I thought it looked like netting and would be really cool as a pocket on the inner front and back cover. And I want to sew them in, which means I got to remove 
the signatures. And I messed up with the second one anyway, or I, the first one I sewed in, which was the second signature, because I some of the pages are upside down. I didn't check that before I sewed them. So I'm going to remove the signatures, sew in the black mesh as pockets, and then re-sew the signatures. Let's try that again. So now I'm going to say this is done. I haven't decided yet if I want to put the month and the year on the front. I may in this area. It's kind of perfect for it, but I got to find the right lettering. So we'll save that for another video. I think the theme of this is crappy stitching. Lots of issues with stitching on this one, but I'm just going to roll with it. Just going to roll with it. Um, that's the front and back cover. I really like them. Is that coming out? I may need to, to glue that down. And then inside we have the black mesh pocket on both front and back inner cover. I love it. I really am glad that I went back and pulled the signatures out for that because I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Even just sticking some like pieces of ephemera in there or, you know, like fussy cut sea creatures or something like, I think that's going to be really cool. Now let's do a flip through of this journal, <laughs> a proper flip through since, uh, Apparently, I don't know what I'm doing yet. Oh, that's stuck. Interesting. I wonder how that happened. I love all the grungy edges. I think it makes it look like this book was underwater a little bit and the pieces folded over. I'm not fixing because I like it. It adds to the grunge. I will most likely use this as a pocket to cover that August. Or who knows? Who knows? I love the way this blue looks on this image. <laughs> After what just happened, I had to make sure my pocket was the right way. This was the questionable signature. I did leave this one upside down because I liked the way the waves looked. These I left in the same position even though they were opposite. And initially they were shifted. This one was up and this one was lower. But I like it. And of course my plants are facing the right way. Imagine that. I flipped this one and I flipped this one. This one was flipped. I love, I just love the way that turned out. My octopus is facing the right way. Love it. Wonderful. My lobster, I left that way because I, I liked him. Alright, this I might end up, it's kind of flimsy, I might end up like folding it or something, I don't know yet. I don't know. But, there we have it, yeah, the stitching, I think there's something up with the bobbin in my sewing machine because the sewing just was really subpar, but this being a junk journal, I rolled with it. I really love these pockets. I'm so glad I went through the hassle of pulling out the signatures. And I did leave a little bit of the mesh sticking out of the side. I don't know. I think it works. So there we have the July journal. I cannot wait to start working in this journal. I'm very excited. It's so delightfully grungy and 
the cover is quite different from what I would usually make. So we're branching out, we're trying new things, and uh, yeah, let's get to work in this thing, shall we? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and all of its um, trials, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.